Tonight, we're going to talk about spring. We have had the best winter in Syracuse history. It has been for someone who lives on a hill and has to go down a huge hill, and last year I thought I was going to die a couple of times, and I didn't, through the grace of God. And I'm going to bring everyone with me. Um, it was beautiful. I, what did we have? One day where it was a little iffy? And people are saying global warming, this or that. I think it was God listening to someone's prayer saying, please help me get off this hill. So now it's spring and it is beautiful. And it's the perfect time to talk and pray it off about spring cleaning, about clearing clutter. Our God is a God of order, not chaos. It is not a chaotic God. And there's such a connection between weight and clutter. And we're going to talk about how clearing clutter can help you lose weight. This first article at Pray It Off on Thursday night is by Peter Walsh. He's talking about clear clutter, lose weight, and live a richer life with less stuff. One of the things I was always very good at is helping other people clear their clutter. I was great at it. But then I was one of those people who was a closet hoarder. I have bins that I've been now working on, but I would put things in bins because I couldn't stand to put, get part with them. And I realized that the clutter did not represent what I thought it did. It was something I was hanging on to. We talk at this group about letting go. We need to ascertain why we're hanging on to these things. Are we what we own? One of the things my sister-in-law, who has gone to Haiti, already says is that the people that she meets in Haiti are so joyful. They're praising God. They've lost everything. But they're alive. They love it. God, they're not encumbered with their possessions, not even a home in many cases. She leaves there feeling richer herself. And here we, the American public, have so much, and yet so many times the richest among us feel the most empty. You know, I have an office at home where I do a lot of work, and recently I tore it all apart. I just, you know, got everything out and that's one of the keys whenever you're going to organize the first rule of thumb is if you've got two drawers to organize you get a huge box you put everything in the box and then you put back in what you need i did that in my office and i have to say i felt so much better i go in there i don't feel weighed down i i, I felt lighter freer I recommend that we take a really good look at our stuff because it's not about the stuff and it's not about the food. When I was in first grade, we were poorer than anything. And Mrs. Riley, Mrs. Riley took a liking to me. She was right from Ireland and she thought I was awesome. Her making me feel so special I think changed my life in so many ways. I'm like, I'm special? She thought I was smart. She thought I was funny. I was in first grade. So when I left first grade, she gave me this little plaque. And it, it, it was like a silhouette art. And it, it was just this nice little plaque. So maybe I was in fifth grade. And I come home from school. And I went to throw something away. And wasn't the plaque in the garbage? So I said to my mother, Mom, that's the plaque Mrs. Riley gave me. She goes, you don't need it. And I go, but I don't want to get rid of it. I mean, it means so much to me. It meant more to me than just the plaque. So I took it out of the garbage. But that's when it started. That's when my everything I look at. And I don't hoard things like, I don't say, well, I want to hang on to this can. I mean, everything's got a little story. Everything's got a little meaning. Oh, my sister-in-law got me this, or my brother. How many of you are relating to what I'm saying here? 
Does that mean if I ever did get rid of, which is still hanging on my wall in my office, the plaque from Mrs. Riley, and here's what you can say to yourself. I'm not going to get rid of the plaque from Mrs. Riley, but I'm going to get rid of 10 things in lieu of the plaque from Mrs. Riley. Make your decisions on what you really love. I'm not saying go home to an empty shell and say, I went to someone's house once and they had nothing. And I said, are you moving? And she goes, what do you mean? I said, they were moving. No knickknacks, no patty wax, nothing was out, nothing on the walls. I go, you're moving? No. She goes, what do you mean? I go, well, where is everything? She goes, what do you mean? I mean, it was the bare bones. And that's the way she lived. And I've gone to other places of other people's houses where I walked in like this. I know I can get to the couch. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Just move that pile over there and have a seat. And if you feel like that's your house, don't raise your hand. So we need to understand, are we hanging on to a lot of things because of trauma? Are we hanging on to a food? because of trauma. It, it reflects so much. And another thing is, our house reflects who we are in many ways, just like our body reflects who we are in many ways. I would never go to, to, to work without my hair combed, my teeth brushed, the makeup on, and a decent outfit. Ever. I would never have company over without my house picked up. But there's the basement where people don't go. <laughs> and that's where it all is. In bins. But I'm working on it. Bob will attest. I am working on it. Is this a process? Is losing weight a process where you're going to say, I don't want to be fat anymore. You walk through a magic door. I'm thin. It's not. It's the same way with clutter. You don't say, maybe you can. I can't. I mean, maybe you can say, I'm going to get rid of everything. Do it. And then you got rid of everything. Sometimes it's a process, especially when it gets to bills and things like that. Because here's another thing. I'm always afraid that I might need something. What if I get rid of my, 2000, my 1980 tax returns? I mean, here I was audited by the IRS, and I said to the woman, do I need to keep every tax return I've ever done in my entire life since 1972? And she's like, no. And I said, well, how long do I have to keep them? She goes, so let's keep seven years. And seven years, help me out here, 2012 minus seven. And I have all of them. So you take a shredder, er, 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 there's a bin. 1972 to 2003 or whatever it is. That's what I've been working on. Clutter and fat are so connected. It's no accident that at the same time we are struggling with the epidemic of obesity, we are also living in homes weighted down with clutter and filled with stuff. There's nothing wrong with stuff. There's nothing wrong with food. It's only when there's too much of either one. You got a nice little Hummel collection. I'm not going to hold that against you. But if you've got so many Hummels that you can't even walk into a room or a little teeny breeze starts, you know, disrupting their, their placement, then you might be over collecting. Your relationship to food is complex. If you're fat, your problems are real and there's no miracles. Changing is going to take time and straight talk. One person said to me tonight, you know, thank you for not getting upset with me for not losing weight. I have never gotten upset with anyone for not losing weight. I kind of sometimes get upset if you don't come. I really think you need to come. But I never get upset. This is the person who's gone like this up and down, up and down, up and down. No one understands how hard it is to lose weight more than me. Now, I've gone down and I'm trying to stay down and I want to take you all, we're all going to be there together. But it's a process. Sometimes the bell clicks, sometimes it doesn't. We sometimes see things, we got to have them, we got to eat it, we have to have the corned beef, we have to, I didn't go to the hula. I made a choice not to go to the Huli because Ellen would go to the Huli with the best intentions. 
I'm not going to have any beers. I'm not. I'm just not going to have one. And then after around an hour, I'd start thinking, you know what? One. One is not going to kill me. How is one beer going to kill me? And then an hour later, I'd be out there dancing on the dance floor with ten beers under my belt. I know my limitations, so I stay away from it. If you cannot stay away from the chips, keep them out of your house. Declutter your mind, then your home, and your relationship with food. It all has a ripple effect. The more I keep the weight off, the more I don't like clutter. The more I deal with my own issues and problems, the more I don't need the plaque from Mrs. Riley to define who I am as a person. I am still going to be the one she loved in first grade, whether I hang on to the plaque or not, but I'm hanging on to it, just to let you know. But in lieu of that, I'm going to get rid of 10 other things that don't mean as much. I'm going to stop right there, Bob.